Come on, everybody, do the Josh Allen. It's really easy and you can do it at your leisure. Just grab a football and act like you're having a seizure. Seizure, 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 seizure. You can do it with friends and you can do it alone. And if you make a mistake, you can blame your phone. Seizure, seizure, seizure. Welcome to That's Good Sports, I'm Brandon. I can't believe ESPN had the balls to play this animation on Sunday Night Football Perna. I honestly believe Belichick does not give two shits about Brady being gone. He cares way more about the eight players that opted out before the season in the mass exodus of Pats in free agency. But more importantly, he's never seen love actually. He's never seen any movie with the word love in the title because he doesn't know how to do it. Now the Bills might just be the best team in the NFL right now. Josh Allen is a legit MVP candidate. I've been saying it for most of the season with big dick player of the year potential. Stefan Diggs is uncoverable and Bill Belichick hugged Sean McDermott after the game. Something he's never even done to rat boy. I mean, Stephen Belichick. And yeah, I realize that as a man who looks like this, calling somebody else rat boy is pretty messed up. If the Chiefs winning the Super Bowl created coronavirus, then the Bills winning it can end it. Buffalo all the way this time! All the way this time! Let's review Buffalo's domination of the Patriots and hit on some NFL playoff news. Let's get sports! Yes, if you want the Bills to win the Super Bowl, subscribe to this YouTube channel and thumbs up the video. It will help. Today's episode brought to you by my coffee company, BenchWarmerBrew.com. I created Bench Warmer Brew for all the backups out there. Organic, ethically sourced craft beans. And they ain't cheap, so if you want a discount on them, sign up for the subscription so they're delivered to you on a monthly basis or a time frame that you desire, and that's how you can save some moolah. Bitchwarmerbrew.com. <laughs> there is one week left in the NFL season, and there are numerous playoff spots and positioning yet to be determined. Seven teams are in the hunt, which seems like a lot for Kareem to handle all by himself. And four teams are on the bubble, which means they have to win, and they need help to get into the big show. Now, I respect the Eagles for not wasting my time and being the only NFC East team to be so bad, they're already eliminated. The Rams just need to win, and they are in. They play the Cardinals, who need to win and some help. However, Jared Goff had surgery to repair his fractured and self-set dislocated thumb. So he will not play this weekend, meaning it's up to John Wolford to save the Rams playoff hopes. The Rams did nab Blake Bortles off of the Broncos practice squad, and if the Bears lose, they are in as well. The Rams. The Cardinals may be starting a very banged up Kyler Murray, so this game is a toss up. Alex Smith is on track to start for the Washington football team this weekend against the Eagles. If WFT wins, they are in. They are also in if the Cowboys lose. Now, I think everyone outside of Dallas is rooting for Alex Smith to get that team to the playoffs to give us something wholesome to root for in the NFC East. The Colts have to win and they need either Tennessee, Baltimore, Cleveland, or Miami to lose for them to get into the postseason. Now that could be a stretch considering the Dolphins play the Bills and Buffalo really has nothing to play for. Cleveland plays the Steelers who are starting Mason Rudolph. So Miles Garrett can finish what he started and clear a roster spot for the Steelers. And then the Titans and Ravens play the lowly Bengals and Texans. So unless Philip Rivers is willing to Viking sacrifice one of his kids, I'm not sure the Colts have a chance. But there's a lot of interesting games this weekend before we get into the postseason. Bills Patriots. Twas a tight game until the Bills ran a successful fake punt. 
Saran Neal caught the pass in spite of the punter doing absolutely nothing to sell the fake on his end. I've seen Bill Belichick post-game interviews more lively than the Bills punter here. I guess I'd do the same though if I was the least used punter in the NFL and the one time I thought I got to punt, they ran a fake. Does anyone actually know how to say the Bills punter's last name? I've never heard it come out of a single announcer's mouth. And you know how good I am at reading's names here. Bojorquez. Now the Patriots defense lined up offsides twice on one series, keeping the Bills drive alive. Classic example of this team failing without Tom Brady, who personally coached all of the nose tackles in New England to specifically not line up in the neutral zone. Buffalo finished that drive with the first touchdown of the game, and like it had just drank a liter of whiskey, it did not come easy. That drive though gave me even more confidence that the Bills are primed to go all the way. Fake punt. Champions do that shit. Convert a fourth and one. Champions do that shit. Drop two touchdown passes on one drive. Champions do not do that shit, but not giving up and still finding a way to punch it in. Say it with me, Bills Mafia. Champions do that shit. Buffalo then forgot to tackle for exactly one series. The Patriots drove down the field with most of their rushing yards coming after contact. Just an incredible amount of missed tackles, including one that should have dropped Cam Newton for a sack. Instead, he bulldozed his way into the end zone to nearly tie the game. But again, without Tom Brady, the Patriots missed the extra point. This would literally be the only highlight of the game for the Patriots. <laughs> one highlight all fucking night, New England. That's the only impressive thing you did. You guys suck now. You suck. I did learn a disturbing fact about Cam Newton. No, not that he has more rushing touchdowns than any QB in NFL history. That's not disturbing. A record I also think Josh Allen will break one day, but that Cam wakes up at 4.20 a.m. and does not have his first sip of coffee until 8 a.m. I started a coffee company because I can't get coffee into my veins quick enough when I wake up. Make sure to check us out on Twitter and Instagram at BenchWarmerBrew. Also, there's no way in hell that it only takes Cam 10 minutes to put this on and leave the house. Or to put this on, and especially not this, which I know takes Cam at least 20 minutes to squeeze those thick meaty thighs into those tight shorts. Who cares if his favorite receiver in New England is Rex Turfed? With legs like that, he can do whatever he wants. Now the biggest difference between Josh Allen this year and Josh Allen last year is that Josh Allen knows where to go with the football on nearly every play. It's why the coaches had the confidence to let him throw and convert another fourth down. He's a really smart quarterback and probably doesn't get enough credit for that because he again moves like this. It also helps when you have creative play calling and can finish drives with easy wide open tugs. Big Lee Smith was the first Bill to not drop a touchdown pass on the night. Stefan Diggs passed Eric Moulds to break the Bills single season receiving record for yards and he did it by smoking Jesus Christ Jackson like a pack of Newports after the two were talking trash to each other on the series prior. I have poked a lot of fun at Tom Brady today and for the last 10 years, but you know what even I know he could do? Complete this pass. Jesus, Cam, this is, this is unacceptable. This is why you got benched for Jarrett Stidham, whose last name means stillborn pig. Bill Belichick has never met a tablet or phone he didn't want to throw through a fucking brick wall. <laughs> sorry, Bill, but... We're sorry, your call cannot be completed as dialed. Please check the number. Everyone thought this was football related rage, but maybe someone just spoiled the ending of love actually for Bill. Guess what, Bill? It ends with love. Stefan Diggs scored his second touchdown at the hands of a missed Jesus Christ Jackson tackle. Credit the Bills offensive line who didn't let Josh Allen get touched once. 
They're like the magnum condom this big dick QB needed to get up on opponents by going balls deep. The Bills had this game in the bag in the third quarter, but it was done done at the top of the fourth after Lee Smith shook earth galloping into the red zone and Stephon Diggs scored his third touchdown of the night. Diggs would finish with 145 yards and nine receptions. More importantly, he leaped frogged that annoying Travis Kelsey and is now the league leading receiver in terms of receiving yards. Josh Allen's pro comp is officially John Elway, which makes it incredibly ironic that John Elway did not draft him. And just so Bills fans know, I'm not mad about that. Not just because I don't think Denver is equipped to nurture Josh the way Buffalo is, but because... I had John Elway, and it was fucking amazing. And you deserve your own John Elway. I also liked Jim Kelly because I hated Dan Marino. Well, I liked Jim Kelly because nobody said Jim Kelly was better than John Elway, and people said that about Dan Marino. Jim Kelly was always second fiddle to Marino or Elway. But now I fully support Josh Allen becoming first fiddle ahead of Patrick Mahomes, something Allen is close to doing. Statistically, he's right there this year with Mahomes and Aaron Rodgers. A 69.1 completion percentage, 4,320 passing yards, 43 total touchdowns, just nine interceptions, and he led the Bills to two wins over the Patriots, making Buffalo the first team to sweep the Patriots since the goddamn broom was invented. Allen's stats are so good that the only guy to have better overall numbers in NFL history was Drew Brees once in 2011. Allen should win MVP just for hitting Stefan Diggs with the football pregame and not watching Stefan Diggs quit immediately. If Kirk Cousins did that to Diggs, Cousins would have been traded to the XFL. Finally, uh, please stop blaming the Patriots' ineptitude on Tom Brady not being there. Don't get me wrong, they would probably be with the Colts right now, on the bubble if Tom stayed. But I literally heard the Monday Night Football crew say Tom Brady covered up too many deficiencies in New England for too long. What? What? Poor, poor Tom Brady had a top five defense in four of his final seasons in New England. Poor Tom Brady covering up having a Hall of Fame tight end, Julian Edelman and one of the best receiving backs in the league in James White. The only thing Tom ever covered up in New England besides all of their scandals was Robert Kraft's lower half after a massage. Go! And bills. <laughs> Thanks for watching That's Good Sports. Please subscribe here on YouTube. I'm on Twitter, Instagram at Brandon Perna, and Twitter, Instagram at Benchwarmer Brew. Oh, I've got too many irons in the fire. <sighs> Somebody's gonna get burned.